Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. I'm Nick. Today, I'm talking about my 10 most played albums from my record collection. There's a bunch of links down below. Make sure you go check them out. There's links for the Vinyl Den Facebook group, for the merch page, for the Spotify and Apple Music playlist we put together every week, and the Patreon page. Make sure to check all that out. Of course, if you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I release new episodes. So this most played albums thread has been going around on YouTube the last couple of weeks. I think it all started with a long cut. I'll put a link down below if you want to go check out his channel. A lot of great stuff on there. At least that's a place, uh, that's where I remember seeing this at first. And uh, there's been a bunch of great videos over the last couple of weeks about this. I kind of want to throw out mine today also. So when I think about my 10 most played albums, I really kind of had to focus on just the last, you know, probably five or, or six years. If I went back further than that, I mean, I, I, it'd just be too hard for me to kind of rack my brain and try to figure out what my most played albums were. But over the last several years, I kind of know what I've been listening to. So that's kind of what I've, I've got today. I guess I should add that these aren't in really any kind of order. I don't know exactly how many times I've listened to all these albums. I know that these are all the ones I've listened to the most over the last several years. And these aren't necessarily my favorite albums by these bands either. The first album is one that uh, just came out back in the beginning part of 2021. And I can say I'm pretty certain that since this album has been released, it is easily my, my most played album on vinyl, probably on streaming and on CD also. It's a great album. I listen to it pretty regularly. The album is Internet Killed the Rockstar by Mod Sun. I wasn't familiar, all that familiar with Mod Sun before this album came out. I know he'd done some rap stuff before that, and before that he was the drummer for uh, Scary Kids, uh, Scaring Kids. Uh, so he's done a lot of different stuff over his career. And uh, this is an album that really kind of brought me into to what he's doing now, and uh, I love this album. His follow-up to this isn't quite as good, but uh, this is just a damn good album. So if you've been following me for a while here on YouTube, if you follow me on social media, if you're in the Vinyl Den Facebook group, the next one might surprise you a little bit, because uh, I generally, I mean, for the most part, I listen to a lot of punk music. That's kind of what my, my favorite genre is from the last, you know, 30, 35 years. This next album is very much not that. Uh, it's an album I listen to pretty regularly. It's like my Sunday album that I always toss on. But it is the Definitive Collection by Lionel Richie. My parents used to listen to Lionel Richie a lot when I, when I was growing up. So, of course, I, I knew and loved a lot of his music. And I work every other weekend. So on my Sundays off, I uh, come down here to my office. This is like one of the first albums I always toss on. I just love it. The next album is one that uh, I think it came out in like late 2020. And I, I remember someone recommended it to me uh, on Facebook. And I bought it. I think I listened to it once. Thought it was a pretty decent album and then put it away and, and didn't listen to it again for a couple of, a couple of months. And then out of nowhere, I just picked it up, spun it one day, and like completely fell in love with this album. If Internet Killed the Rockstar has been my number one most played album, this is definitely my number two. And uh, as far as like listening to it on vinyl, CD, streaming, all that, uh, all that com combined. And it's an artist that I wasn't all that familiar with before this album. But this is Weird by Youngblood. He's, uh, he's an English musician. Does very like punk adjacent kind of music and uh you know it's just a fantastic album the next one is definitely an album that i've listened to a bunch over my life uh, it's an album that i've loved ever since i was a young kid probably gosh i was probably maybe 10 or 11 years old the first time i, I listened to this album my uh, my dad had had this on vinyl i stole it from his record collection way back when but the album is billion dollar babies by alice cooper i'm not the biggest alice cooper fan but i love the Alice Cooper band stuff from the beginning part of his career. And uh, this wasn't always my favorite. I, Killer's probably my favorite. Probably still is my, my favorite to Alice Cooper album. Between that and uh, Welcome to My Nightmare, I love both of those albums. But uh, D Billion Dollar Babies is definitely up there. And uh, this is one that I just uh, picked up. This I finally got a reissue of it within the, the last probably couple of months. But I've got an older original pressing. I've listened to that one for, for years and years. And uh, I've got this album. I think, I'm pretty sure I bought this on cassette i bought this on cd of course i stream it of course i've got it on vinyl also it's just one of those albums that uh, i've played pretty regularly over the last you know 30 40 years the next album is one that's probably along the same lines as uh, as billion dollar babies it's not my favorite album from this band but i've definitely listened to it a ton over the years ever since it was first released back in uh, 1989 but the album is uh, disintegration by the cure Wish is my favorite uh, Cure album. It has been since it was first released in uh, in 92. Definitely love that album. But that one wasn't available on vinyl 
at least at a, at a decent price until you know just within the last several months. Uh, last I think uh, late last year, early part of this year is when uh, Wish was finally reissued on standard vinyl. But this is an album that, of course. This is the album that probably a lot of people kind of hold up as their their favorite Cure album, but it's definitely in my top probably two or three uh, Cure albums, and it's an album that is an absolute 10 out of 10 album. There's not a skippable track on here, and of course Love Song was the big song off of this one, but there's so many other great tracks on here that uh, you know I think personally are even better than, than that one track. The next album ended 2021 as one of my top three albums of the year. I absolutely love this album. This is one of the, as far as like straightforward rock albums go, I think it's definitely one of the best rock albums of the last probably four or five years. That album is Battle of the Gardens Gate by Greta Van Fleet. I know Greta Van Fleet tends to be one of those punching bag bands that uh, everyone likes to beat on. They like to say that they're Led Zeppelin clones or whatever, whatever you want to call them. This is a really good album though. I really think that the, the style that the band had earlier in their career Definitely was very reminiscent of a lot of Led Zeppelin stuff. I will say that. But I think with Battle of Gardens Gate, they really tried to, to develop more of their own sound. And it really worked on this album. The guitar work on this album, I think, is some of the be best guitar playing on a rock album of the last several years. Like I said, if you are just a casual fan, I know a lot of people hate the lead singer's voice. And I get that because there's lead singers that are like you know nails on a chalkboard to me also. But... If you can kind of get past that, this is just a great album. They just released a new album, Starcatcher, which I thought was a really good album, but I didn't think it quite lived up to, to what they did on this album. I think Battle of the Gardens Gate will always be one of the like greatest album from uh, Greta Van Fleet. They'll always kind of chase and try to duplicate the, the success they had on this album. So I generally don't listen to a lot of live albums. The next one, though, is uh, definitely the exception to that rule. It's probably one of the top two or three live albums ever recorded, in my opinion at least. And just a great one. I've loved this one since it was first released back in 1993. The album is Live and Loud by Ozzy Osbourne. This is a really hard one to have. Like, uh, if you want an original pressing of this, it's going to cost you a couple hundred bucks. It wasn't really widely available until they released the box set a few years ago. And this one I just got in my collection probably within the last six or eight months. Is when I got the, the Ozzy box set. And since then, uh, I've played it a bunch of times. Of course, I had listened to the CD for years. Actually, it's uh, sitting on, if you look over my shoulder, you can barely see it. I got the, uh, well, I guess I'll just reach for it. I actually have the, the original CD. This is the one with the, the metal grate on it. So this is celebrating its 30th anniversary this year. I really thought they should have done a, uh, a, uh, a anniversary edition of it with this metal grate. I thought that would be really cool for, uh, for a vinyl release. But uh, I haven't seen anything yet. Hopefully they will eventually reissue it, though, because this is, like I said, as far as like live albums go, this is a great one. If you've been following the channel for a while or if you're part of the Facebook group, the last two albums won't surprise you at all. The uh, the next one I've long considered, ever since it was first released in 93, I've considered it one of the best albums of all time. It's definitely, I, I definitely put it in the top 10. I don't know if it'd be in the top five. I'd have to actually sit down and, and think about it. But it's a great album. That is Versus by Pearl Jam. This is an album that, you know, even though it's 30 years old, it's as relevant today as when it was released uh, in 1993. And stuff the, the, the stuff that they sang about, the, the themes on this album, were as important today as they, as they were then. And in 1993, a lot of bands, especially in rock, weren't talking about things like they're talking about on this album, you know, whether it's child abuse, sexual assault, uh, police brutality, all sorts of different topics that, like I said, in 1993, a lot of other rock bands just weren't uh, talking about their music. And then last on my list, of course, is the album that everyone gives me grief about how many copies of this album I have. It's an album that I've loved for a long time, ever since I was a, a young kid. I didn't really appreciate it, uh, it you know, there, there for probably a long time. It was probably until I was probably just after I graduated high school that I, I think I really gained a, a different appreciation for this album. But the album is The Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. Long considered this the greatest album ever recorded. But when I was younger, I was definitely more of a fan of The Wall. And uh, I would I listened to The Wall a lot. I only kind of casually listened to some of the stuff off, uh, off of Dark Side. And then, like I said, it's probably 97, 98, 99 when I really got into this album and really realized... You know how great of a piece of art this this album really is. Well, that's all I got for you today, guys. Thanks for checking the show out. Make sure you drop me a comment down below. Let me know what your top 10 most played albums are. I always love th uh, threads like this on, on YouTube. I love watching these videos. So if you got a YouTube channel, make sure you uh, do a video for, for this also. These are always a lot of fun. But let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me the old thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button down below. That's all I got. Until next time, keep on spinning. Peace. Peace.